In Top Boy, black men live with heavy pressures. Many of the men in the series are sweeping up the pieces of shattered families, feeling their way through life in the city's most deprived estates. I'm an Aethiop Neef Equidem, a freelance writer and storyteller from South London, and today I'm going to talk to you about some of the men in Top Boy. You need to be there for it, you know. What? Dads. To be there for their daughters, man. Top Boy is full of tired men, eager and anxious about providing for and protecting their young children. Among the high drama of their lives, where they risk freedom for quick wins, they are haunted by the fear that their efforts aren't enough, that the money they bring in is not enough, that as men, they are not enough. That right there's my little girl. When her daddy comes home, that little girl needs to be standing in front of a hero, not a fucking con in prison stink. Sally is no different. Because he was in jail, he was absent while his daughter grew up and is now weighed by pressure to present himself as a hero upon his return. That's all I am right now. Fucking broke con. Top Boy sees black men hunting down goalposts that are forever shifting. That's why we come here, innit? On their birthdays. Happy birthday, Mum. Happy birthday, Mum. When their mother died of cancer and their father tragically passed soon after, Jamie and his two brothers were left orphaned. The responsibility fell on the eldest to step up for his siblings. You there cooking? Me or Ari? It's me, innit? Come on, you know what I mean? Ayo, don't even lie to the kid, fam. You know he's not in my league. Shut up, man. The youngest brother, Steph, now looks to Jamie as a safety blanket. Hey, Jamie! Can you wake me up? Will you come in? I can't go to sleep unless you come in. Regardless of whether Jamie feels ready or feels capable, he has little choice but to provide for his siblings in whatever way possible. Next time I'm here, I want to hear you're doing as well as us, yeah? He turns to the opportunities he sees in his environment. I'm running the fucking fields, cuz! Nah. You ain't. In showing him do so, Top Boy gives context to why some young men might risk their freedom and lives on the roads. Perhaps the most tragic example is Atz. A home visit from immigration officers leaves his mum's citizenship in jeopardy. She's really sad, man. Like, all the time. I don't know what to do. Over the course of the season, we watch him fall into a state of desperation. He tries to fix their money troubles, first by selling burgers outside of school, then attempting to steal and sell dogs, and eventually, as a last resort, begging the summer house crew for an introduction into drug dealing. I don't have a phone. Shit. No wonder you want to fucking start shutting, bruv. By the end of the season, the high achieving, happy student is gone, replaced by a young man who will do anything he can to piece together a home that is slowly falling apart. The strains of providing inevitably leave cracks, and throughout the season, we see this portrayed through Jamie and Aaron's complex relationship. You ain't my dad, bro. Yes, I am. No, you're not. See me, I'm your father, yeah? I'm your mother, I'm your older brother. Top Boy shows that these are the frictions that arise when a son is turned parent too soon, when a boy becomes a man too early, when the innocence of youth is stripped away without warning and he's left alone to stare down the anxieties of adulthood. Your brother's still right? Yeah, man. There was no rule book left for Jamie that taught him what it means to be a father. He's learning as he goes, feeling his way through the world with no guidance and no role model. The only signposts of parenthood he has are the striking traits he remembers in his parents, the resilience he recalls in his mum, and the authoritative tone that radiated from his dad. Both are attributes he feels he now must embody. I'm so proud of you, though. Meanwhile, the Shane is chasing shadows of his own. 36 years old. I ain't got no woman, no kids, fucking sleeping on Driss's stinking sofa. Tortured by his past glories and perceived triumphs, Deshane's obsession with reaching the top is one that eventually corrupts his character and adds a bleak ruthlessness to his nature. He fucking won. What does it matter? I did what I had to do to get us back on top, and that's what a fucking leader does. But at what cost? By the end of the season, he loses almost all that he loves. His cousin rests in a grave, his mum refuses to see his face, and he has wrecked the trust of his only remaining friend. Just because we didn't lose, doesn't mean we won. They are all collateral damage of Deshane's frustration. The harsh reality that he's a man who's reached 36 years old with little to show for it. But these characters are not defined solely by their quiet fears of appearing less than men. 
Top Boy also finds space for powerful moments of intimacy and release. See when man was in jail and you were shouting me. Like respect for that. I've got you, bro. Just like how you've always had me, man. These spaces are both literal and symbolic. Sully finds solace in Jason, opening up to his friend when they briefly leave the chaos of East London behind and arrive in an English seaside town. You know I've never even seen the sea before. I never left the fucking country. <laughs> I'm 35 years old, I never left the country. Imagine that. With Jason, Sully unburdens and feels secure enough to lay himself bare. The town gives a sense of isolation, a reprieve from the relentless nature of the big city. And at times, while down in Ramsgate, the mask he wears for his daughter briefly disappears and it's as if he's fallen back in time. He becomes just a kid messing around with mates on the beach. It's a long, deep exhale for one of Top Boy's most tormented individuals. One that reframes his character, sheds free the fears that surround emotional intimacy, and instead displays a sense of freedom that emerges when space is found for vulnerability. If you could have anything, yeah, what would it be? You know what? To go watch Arsenal play, because they're the best fucking team in the whole Premier League. In a similar fashion, Kit is a release valve and a gentle letdown at Jamie's lowest hour. <laughs> it's a powerful scene that captures a moment documented rarely in British media, that of two black men curled in each other's arms. In Top Boy, it serves as a message that although Jamie shoulders burdens, in the midst of turmoil, he doesn't need to face the world alone or with a brave face. Then in the closing scenes of the season, Jamie's relationship with Aaron boils to crisis point. This is your fault, bruv. This is all your fault. Promise them, man. Promise them. Promise mum and dad you're gonna take care of us. And when it does, the hard paternal exterior finally melts away. Their father and son relationship slowly ebbs out and the siblings embrace in tears. Ooh, it's chill. It's chill. In their darkest hour, they find comfort and purge in each other's arms. It's a bittersweet new beginning for a difficult brotherhood and a revealing peek into what occurs when boys are unknowingly thrust into the role of providers. In all, Top Boy is a glimpse into the crises that can fray and mend the relationships between men and those who they love most dearly. It's a vivid depiction and an intense exploration of the pressures of male adulthood in Black Britain and beyond.